In this video, I will show how to set up data for ANOVA, how to run the ANOVA using the data analysis tools in Excel, and then how to use the output from the ANOVA to make a graph of your data. Set up your data just like this if you are using Microsoft Excel with a PC, and if you're using newer versions of Microsoft Excel for Mac. If you have an older version of Excel for Mac, you may need to set up your data differently and use Stats Plus alongside Excel. For, for this one, I am using Microsoft Excel 2016 on a PC. Um, notice that your treatments should be shown in the first column. And uh, notice that this is just leaf number. I have set up three different sheets for leaf length, chlorophyll, and leaf number. And I just have some made up data that we're going to use to show how to do an ANOVA. So I've got three control plants, or sorry, four control plants and four experimental plants. You might want to use a more specific label than experimental. For example, you might want to use salt treated or acid treated or shaded, for example. Once you have your data organized correctly, open up the data tab. If you do not see data analysis, then you will need to add this add-on. The way you do that in Microsoft Excel for PC is go into the File menu, scroll down and go to Options. In that box that opens up, choose Add-ins, highlight Analysis Tool Pack, and then go down and click Go. Make sure you click Go and not OK. Then you can select Analysis Tool Pack and Analysis Tool Pack VBA and make sure those are activated. Once you do that, you should be able to see data analysis. So click on that. In this dialog box that opens up, I'm going to select ANOVA two-factor with replication. We're using an, an, a two-factor ANOVA because we not only have the treatment independent variable, control versus experimental, but we also have three weeks of data. So time is another independent variable in our experiment. So two-factor. The width replication is because we were measuring the same plants from week to week to week, so we repeatedly measured the same plants. So once I've chosen that, I click OK. In this new box that opens up, I'm going to put in my input range. You can see I've selected uh, the range. I can do that by clicking on that little button. Select my data range. And notice that I want to select the range including my treatment um, and week one and week two and week three. So I want my column labels to be in there. I have four rows per sample. I have four controls and four experimental plants. The alpha of 0 0.05 is fine. And then I like to have my output show up on the same sheet. So under output range, I've chosen this uh, square here, H2, and that way that's where the output will, will show up. So I'm going to click OK, and here's my output. I'm going to make my H column a little wider so I can read everything. The output will have some summary tables. I have summary data for my control plants and my experimental plants, and then total summary data. And if you scroll down, you will also have your actual ANOVA table. For now, we're not going to use the ANOVA table. We're going to work with our summary data. In particular, we can use these averages that have been calculated for us to make a graph. So I will select the averages for the control, hold down on my control key, and then I can select the averages for my experimental. Once those are selected, I go to Insert, and I insert the graph that I want. Now we have a graph. Um, first thing we want to do with this graph to clean it up is we're going to remove the title because later I'm going to make um, a legend to put under my graph. I want to change these series labels to something that is more meaningful than Series 1 and Series 2. To do that, I go into Select Data, I highlight Series 1, and I edit that. Instead of being called Series 1, I want that to be con called Control. Series 2, I want to call experimental. 
you again might want to have a more specific word for that. Now when I click on OK, I've got or appropriately labeled um, legend down here. I also am going to want to add a y-axis label. I can either click on this green plus or I can go up here to add chart element. I want an axis title. I want the primary vertical axis title and I want to call this leaf number. When I hit enter, that will go in there. So this is the leaf number on the y-axis. These are control and experimental. Um, I might want to also put in an x-axis label that says weeks, uh, or I might want to go in and change these to one, week one, week two, week three, whatever makes sense. Now, the other thing I want is I want to put in some error bars. To put in error bars, we want to calculate our standard error. You can see that a, the ANOVA output does not give us standard error, but it does give us variance. And we can calculate standard error from variance. The formula for that is that the standard error is equal to the square root of the variance, so I'll select the calculated variance, divided by the count, or n. So I'll select that box. So now I, I have used the variance to calculate the standard error. I can go ahead and copy that across for my three weeks. And I can also copy that formula, paste it down here, and now it's calculating the variance of my experimental, or the standard error of my experimental data. Again, I can copy that across, and now I have standard errors for both my control data and for my experimental data. To put these into your graph in the form of error bars, click on the graph. Again, click on the little blue box to add a chart element. We want error bars. We don't want to just select standard error here. Instead, we want to put in our own standard errors that we've calculated. I'm going to go ahead and put in the control ones first. And I'm going to put in custom error bars by specifying the values that we've, collect, that we've calculated. For my positive error bar, for my control data, I'll select these three standard errors that we calculated. For the negative, I'll select these three. Oh, I take that back. I don't want those. I want the same three because I'm doing the negative error, what would be below the top of the column here. So these two, the positive error and the negative error, should be the same. Now I've got my calculated error bars showing up here. And you can kind of check and see if they look right. To put in the ones on the experimental bars, we will again click on, just select those three bars, the orange ones. Click on error bars. Again, we're going to choose more options, and we're going to choose custom, and we're going to specify the value. Now is when, when we're going to choose these error bars for both the positive and the negative. So we'll choose the standard error from the experimental and OK. And now I have my standard errors. And there are some other things you can do to prettify the graph, but that's all I wanted to show for this video.